So in today's video, we're going to be learning about writing and choosing the equivalent fractions up to 20 ths So first of all, we're going to be covering topics such as what are equivalent fractions? How can we write equivalent fractions? How can we find out equivalent fractions? What are the ways we can use to find the equivalent fraction of one fraction? And then how does the fraction change when we write an equivalent fraction and so on? So first of all, let's look at what an equivalent fraction is. So first, I would like to use these two bar models. All right, so the first bar model has been split up into six parts. So the denominator of this bar model would be a six. Okay, and then over here, this bar model that we have here has been split up into two parts. So the denominator of this bar model would be a two. Now I'm going to use my highlighter and shade the same size in both the bar models, right? So I'm going to shade the same size. So this and this. So now you can see that both of these places that are saved are the same size. Okay, so that mean, but we've got three parts shaded here out of the six parts. We've got three parts shaded, so the numerator would be a three. So this is three, six, and this is one half. One half is shaded here, three, six is shaded here. So do you see, even though it's the same size that is shaded, we've got two different fractions right there. But in reality, both of these fractions, even though the denominators and the numerators are different, both of these fractions are equal to each other. The only difference is that the parts have been split up into more parts, or the parts have been formed, stuck stick together as one part over here. Okay, so that is equivalent fraction. That is what we mean by equivalent fractions. So there are different ways we can use to find equivalent fractions, right? So remember, the size doesn't change. Only the denominator and the numerator's digits change. So there are two ways in which we could use to find equivalent fractions, right? So the first way is by multiplication. All right, so let's take two bar models, just like how we did before, right? Okay, one of these bar models, I'm going to split them up into two parts. Okay, and one of these, I'm going to split them up into four parts. Okay, now I'm going to shade the same size in both the bar models. Okay, now please see, the denominator here would be a 2 because we have two parts, but the numerator would be a 1 because we only have one half shaded here. Over here, the denominator would be 4 because we have four parts. The numerator would be 2 because we have two shaded here, right? Now, do you see one part has been split up into two here? Okay. So that means the numerator has been multiplied by 2. When that happens, the denominator will also be multiplied by the same number. Okay, so we could split it up into more pieces. We could multiply the denominator and the numerator by 3, 4, 5, 6, any number. All right, we could do it by any number and get an equivalent fraction. So method one is by multiplying the denominator and the numerator using the same number. Okay, now let's look at the other method we can use to find equivalent fractions. So this method is to divide the number, to divide the denominator and the numerator. So first, I'm going to use two bar models over here. Okay, so over here, I'm going to use a shape the same size like we did previously. Okay so we need to shade the same size. We've got about, we've got about two quarters here, and we've got about one half here. So over here, do you see two pieces together? We have sticked them together into one piece, isn't it? All right. So that means we have divided both the denominator and the numerator by a two. Okay, so two divided by two is one, four divided by two is two. All right. So we could divide the denominator and the numerator by the same number to get an equivalent fraction as well. But when you're deciding on which number to divide, you need to remember that the denominator and the numerator has to be divided without any remainders. Right, okay, now let's look at an example. So the first example that I'm going to give you is three quarters, right? So could you try to find an equivalent fraction for three quarters?
Okay, all right. So three quarters, we could multiply the numerator and the denominator by a two. Okay, so three times two is six. Four times two is eight. So six, eight is an equivalent fraction of three quarters. Now, I'm going to give you another example, right? So you need to underline the fraction equivalent to three quarters. All right. So the fractions that are going to be is two quarters, six eighths, six twelfths, and four eighths. Okay, all right. So over here, it's almost the same as a previous question, but I've given a little bit more options here. Okay, so do you see this is the only answer out of all the answers, because we can't divide three by any number to get two, and then we can multiply three by two to get six, right? We could do that. But if we did, we need to multiply the denominator by the same number. So if you multiply three by two to get six, you need to multiply 4 by 2 as well. But here, 4 has not been multiplied by 2. Okay, so over here, we cannot multiply 3 by any number to get 4. So that would also be incorrect, right? So now, example number 3 would be, could you try to find the equivalent fraction 3 over 6? Okay, let's look at the question. So if it's 3 6, we could either multiply both of these denominator and the numerator together. So I'm choosing the number 3. Okay, so you could multiply by any number to get an equivalent fraction. But remember both the denominator and the numerator has to be multiplied by the same number. So 3 times 3 is 9. 6 times 3 is 18. So this would be an equivalent fraction for three, six, right? Now, I'm going to give you one last example for this video. So this is going to be, all right, how are you going to find this out? So for this, we could divide the denominator and the numerator. Since these are large numbers, we could go ahead and divide them by the same number. So 9 divided by 3 is 3. 27 divided by 3 would be a 9. So 3 9th would be an equivalent fraction for 9 27 So this is how we work with equivalent fractions. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe the channel to get more conceptual videos.